So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn of The Way to Be, and today I'm looking at a very interesting and unique new hive design called Ivory B. That's the name of the family that designed it. And they put this thing together, and I was very interested when I met them at Hive Life 2023. And they come out of Israel. And what we're talking about today is, first of all, how to put it together. But I'm also going to show it to you once it is together and we put the bees in it. So if you don't want to see the assembly details, please jump to the 24-minute mark and you can see how it works with the bees. So they include everything you need, including the wood glue. But I'm going to swap that out. Nothing against this glue, but I like to use Type Bond 3, which is our all-weather glue here in the United States. And I put all my woodwork together with that. This is how it comes. This is the most involved assembly of any beehive I've ever owned. And I've put together flow hives and everything in between. And I build my own hives of my own design. So this is going to be interesting. It is actually modeled a little bit after an ancient hive that was discovered in the Jordan Valley. It includes the pure beeswax foundation. You have these assembly instructions. We're going to go through those too. I'm going to take those staples out so I can go sheet by sheet. There's a lot of assembly, clamping, and gluing going on with this. And the unique part is there's no hardware, by the way. There are two screws. That's it for putting the entrance reducers on. Beyond that, it's clamping, gluing, and putting the pieces together. All the clamps come with it. All the instructions are pretty detailed. And I'm going to give you my final thoughts at the very end, but I can tell you ahead of time, I like a lot of things about it. Number one being that it is an insulated hive and that it's a unique design and it's a horizontal cylinder. And uh, that kind of imitates the bee space that you would find inside a hollow log or something like that. And as I mentioned before, I think these dimensions very closely match some early clay beehives that were discovered. And they were defined in world archaeology, and they talked about the times of Solomon, and uh, they found these hives in a covered space at the fringe of a city. And so those were made out of unfired clay, but this, of course, is made out of wood. And so we're going to go step by step. I'm going to put the whole thing together. I'm showing you their website. There will be links down in the video description, because guess what else is going on? Today, they are launching their Indiegogo campaign. So this group is trying to get funding for this hive in the United States. And I'm going to talk about its attributes. You decide for yourself if it's something you'd like to have. So Type Bond, as I mentioned, is what I'm going to use. I don't know anything about the glue that came with it, but I'm sure it works perfectly fine. But this has been proven in my bee yard through decades. So we'll move right on. Let's get this thing together. And it's defined by the parts. The base, you have the cover, and you have a transparent cover, and then the frames themselves, and it's all here. And this is a 15-frame design. And look, they're clearly marked. The B is for base, and then, of course, the components B2, B9, and so on. There are also temperature sensors that come with it, one for the base inside temp, and then you can get the outside temp when you put those in the top. So it looks like the entire thing is laser cut. It is a laminate material. And there's going to be a lot of bending going on here. So if you've ever put a model together, you're going to have that same sense of accomplishment as you did when you put together a fairly complex model and you finally get to see the finished product. And this thing, though, has a practical end. And of course, there are transparent panels for the ends. There are these very unique round frames that measure about 12 and 3 8 inches in diameter. And F2, for example, these are clamps. Just little slide-on clips that will hold things together. And these are the sensors. The one on the left is for the interior temperatures. The one on the right is for the outside temp. And these are the entrance reducers that come with it. So you can block it off completely, or you can have it ventilated, yet the bees can't get out, or you can have the entrance open. So you could transport it, in theory, with the uh, vented ones clipped on. Now that's a honey extraction table there. It's got a little hole in the middle of it. You put the frames on it, you uncap them, you turn it upside down, and you drain the honey. It also has insulation with these reflective surfaces on it. You know I'm a fan of Reflectex. Uh, these go at the ends, and of course the white insulation goes around the top and the underside too. So this hive 
is completely insulated for cold weather. And I'm going to put that to the test this year, too, because I live in the snow belt. And that's right, I'm going to put the hive outside. So there's the base, first of all, but we're going to talk about how to get that together. You're looking at three pieces, but there's a method. See how I've left the gaps open here? We want to leave space to put wood glue in here. And this laminate material does bend fairly easily. So it seems a little flimsy at first, but when you start getting the things together, you find out it becomes very rigid fast. And I'm using these acid brushes to spread around my wood glue. This wood glue is certified for indirect contact with food. None of the glue is really going to be uh, exposed to the bees themselves. But before you push these pieces together, put the glue between all the joints. And by the way, I suggest that you use a lot of it. Because this glue has a longer working time, for example, than Type Bond 2. And once you put it together, then I also seal the joints with it. That's right. It's considered waterproof, weatherproof, it's an exterior certified glue. That's why I went with it. So as you start to put it together, seal the joints up, and then you've got this top piece that pulls it all in and begins to make it even more rigid. But before we put this B3 panel on, we want to put glue again on the top surfaces of the curved under portion. So I'll move right along. I'll try not to bore you to tears here because I know you can probably figure out how to spread your own glue around. I just wanted to make sure not to skip any steps just in case someone actually uses this video as their assembly guide. So all the mating surfaces, glue them up really good and you'll have a nice seal and a very strong unit in the end. So of course then we just have the glue on the tops here. We're going to put that together. we got to put that panel on. And sometimes you might wrestle a little bit with bending these panels around and uh, just have patience. I think that's something that's missing from a lot of people today is having the opportunity to assemble something that's fairly complex, follow the instructions, and then have that sense of accomplishment when you're done. So that panel piece is on there, but it doesn't stand alone. It doubles up. So we have to paint a bunch of the glue again on this mating surface. And I overdid it a little bit. I didn't need to put the glue all the way to the interior of that. So if you're following this, you know, stick to the outside edges. And then we're going to put B4 right on it. And you can, it doesn't matter which side you put up if you want to hide that. But I just like to reach diagonally to each corner and line everything up. And then, of course, this gives us a chance to use the clips that came with it. And I recommend, W1 here, that you use all the clips. You can't have too many clips when you're putting this kind of thing together. And then if you notice, the glue oozes out over the edges there. And uh, you can just run your finger along that and smooth it down. So I don't see it as a problem if you get a little sloppy with the glue, but it is important to smooth it out just like that. And it'll seal some of the end grain too. Now, the interesting part is none of this is going to be exposed when it's done because there's a cover. And these are the insulation inserts. That one there was a little bit wonky the way it came, but we're going to reestablish its form because, look, there's B6, these cover plates that go in there. And there are little receiver grooves in there also. So you can push that in and you can put the glue on ahead of time and smear it across the bottom or you can push them into place and then just run the glue in afterwards because the glue does pull in. But you want to make sure the top edge of that fits underneath that top flange there. So now they're in place. You also notice there's a little punch out hole there right in the center of that panel. So if you were putting that thermal sensor in, that would be the time to do it. You punch out the hole, run the sensor through, then you put that little plug back in and that tiny hole is just for the cord to go through. So that would be your inside temp. I'm leaving mine intact because I don't really care too much about inside temp of the hive. Um, but I just wanted to show you that the sensors are there. You have that option. The other thing is there's a space at the bottom there. There it is, the serial number, marking the model of the uh, hive that you've got here. So this is a 15 frame size. I guess there is a larger one if... Uh, I chose another one. I think I would go with the longer version after I've had it in use for a little bit here. 15 frames is good, but uh, longer would be better in my opinion. So also this is the base, but remember we've got insulation to put into it. So here's this white plastic uh, expanded insulation. 
and of course we're going to glue up these surfaces too because I don't want this thing to ever come apart so build it like it's permanent because it is let me put that in you bend that around you might have a little wrestling tussle there getting that together and it also seems a little flimsy when you're pushing on the outside of it it has a little give to it but guess what they're going to double up the end pieces here they have little inserts so this is really interesting in the way they thought this out so it doesn't just serve to strengthen the feet b9 here also holds the contour of your outside bottom layer so this one i recommend lots of glue we're going to marry these pieces together those little keys that are on the left there uh, go in once they line up and they make sure that you don't make a mistake with lining these up so it's kind of foolproof but you can see that the radius doesn't match yet, so you're really going to have to push this down. And once you find that key way and get it in there, now I push this in the long way. You really need to put them in um, so that they match the hole. So put them in sideways so nothing sticks out there. But you can hear it kind of complaining as I push it down. And then, of course, what do we have to do? We're going to be clamping that stuff together because you want that glue to really hold. And put plenty of glue along the bottom, too. Again, I never want this to come apart. Now, the other thing is we could use aftermarket clamps. We could strap this thing. We could use C clamps and things like that. But I wanted to give a thorough review of the way it comes from the company. So I'm only using the clamps that they provided. So here's the other piece. At the other end, we just repeat that and use all of your clamps. There's no reason to hold back on that. So now we're at C1. So C stands for the cover. And this comes in two layers also, but this is going to be some fancy bending too, because these are going to key in here. And uh, you might get a little frustrated if you're trying to bend that in there and it keeps popping out. Uh, you're going to have to have patience. If you're doing this by yourself, and I did the whole thing by myself, uh, you can eventually get it all in there. And again, it feels kind of flimsy until you get everything together. So look, that's glued up nicely. I know I made that seem easy. And of course, the keyways are all flush there. This shows it to you from all angles, the way everything comes together. And now the end pieces are really gonna give this some rigidity. So you put your glue on ahead of time, push your end piece on, and this shows what it should look like. And yes, these little tabs stick out. They stick all the way through. And that's fine with me. I guess it's just a interesting feature that you'll be looking at. And then at the bottom there, those come out flush. So cover part number three, the ends, it gives it nice rigidity. But it's going to be even stronger. Why? Because it's insulated. So because it's insulated, there's going to be another layer on it. But I'm going to show you the other end going on just in case you didn't figure out that there's one on each end. So I'm just doing every step, not meaning to insult your intelligence or anything. I just don't want to leave anything out and have someone say that, hey, you never showed me that part. Now the cool thing too is on the cover, the end pieces are also insulated. So here we go. This thing is starting to feel like it could handle our winners here. No reason to finish the interior surfaces, of course. And now we're gonna put the insulation on. And uh, W3, bigger clamps. These are the biggest clamps that they have. And there's that piece of insulation which you want to center. In other words, center it from front to back because there's an airspace there. And uh, the ends, remember, are also insulated at the bottom. So this is kind of key here, where to put your glue. All the surfaces that are going to come in contact. And remember, if you're using Type Bond 2, it's going to tack up quicker. If you want that, I like Type Bond 3 because it gives me a longer working time. Have my insulation on there. I found it easy to get this connected at one end and kind of roll it over. And then connect to the other end and put the clamps on. Now the clamps, this is interesting, they do snug it up pretty good and the glue is going to set. And of course I'm going to reinforce my glue joints. And the end pieces have insulation, of course, which I described before. We put that in there. And then of course there's going to be a cover panel. The little square there is for your sensor. And uh, there it is. We have the sandwich pieces in there. So now we have insulation with wood front and back. And now we're going to seal that up with glue. All the while, the sides are drying as well. 
So I'd say the biggest thing about putting this together is waiting for glue to dry. Now, here's an example of when I put those things together, uh, we're gonna have C6 here, but I would have used straps or bar clamps or something like that to pull it even tighter, and I'll show you those details in a minute. C6 is the very end, which again helps with alignment, seals that joint, and gives rigidity. Plus, there's a little cutout here for your fingers, so it's kind of like a grabbing center there when you're pulling the cover off, which I really don't think you need. It could have just been a solid piece in my opinion, but the fact that they put little finger grabs there is fine. But here's what I wanted to show you. Uh, there is a little gap there when you use these clamps and uh, it doesn't hurt really the integrity, but you would find out when you look at the end pieces that the wood doesn't follow the contour all the way down. See the corner here? That's why I think I would use bar clamps or shipping straps or something like that to draw that up right snug against those end pieces. But because I'm reviewing it, of course, I wanted to use just the clamps that they provided. But there is a gap. It doesn't uh, suffer any. Of course, I have this in use already, so I know that that worked just fine. And the plans are very detailed. They show you everything you're supposed to glue, just as I have too. But now we're going to put in the fun part this transparent 180 degree viewing area. So there's clear panels at each end, and there is of course a clear panel that runs the full length of it. So top, T1 and T2, there you go. And we're gonna glue these pieces together, of course, and uh, I'm gonna show you the same thing. Spread your glue out, get plenty of surface area, spread that glue around. And then with the clamps that they provide, there was this little punch out here, which I thought was interesting. That might be some kind of targeting or aligning system for when they actually lay out their pieces. And uh, it was interesting to me that that would pop right out. But of course I'm gluing it in. You have the option to flip it upside down so the T doesn't show and use every single clamp, especially in the corners. Alignment is going to be very important. And I'm gonna show you why in a minute. See that little arrow there? That's where your end pieces are gonna go and uh, give this plenty of drying time because you're about to put some stress on it here. So I let these dry for several hours before I go on. You're better off even waiting overnight and that's probably what takes the longest with putting this together is waiting for the glue to dry. So now we're gonna put T3 and T4 together. This is one of the most frustrating parts for me. Of course, we wanna pull off the blue clear protective coating on your clear end panel here. And it has vent holes in it too. So anyway, T3, look at this. You'll find that there are little bevels on the edges there. So you have to slide it in and then this will hold it in place. And it worked really well for one end piece. For the other one, I couldn't get it to stay together. And if you notice down at the very bottom, the end tabs do stick out a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to use those top plates to hold it in place. But I didn't have the same good fortune with the other end. For some reason, the angle that was supposed to hold that there was a little bit worn. And you also have to put plenty of glue on this because that's gonna seal up your, your clear window for the end. And you can see those vents, of course, put into it. And these keyways, make sure that uh, people like me get this in correctly. So I don't see why you couldn't use silicone or something like that if you wanted to for the end piece, but uh, I'm just using the same wood glue because that's what they described in the instructions. So this one's together. That held, but if you notice the end pieces stick out a little bit there, but I'm gonna fix that because I'm gonna put it right into these flanges here, which is the top bar and uh, running that bead down there because I want that bottom piece to be very firm. Once these are in, I don't want them going anywhere, but you may find that when you put these in place that they don't stay at 90 degrees. It has a tendency to tip a little bit. So I'm going to show you how I solve that problem. And this one, remember the curved piece would not hold. So I had some fun twisting that and it flipped out a few times and gave me a little bit of a test of patience. And I think if you're going to be a beekeeper, you should have to go through something like this to make sure that you're worthy of keeping bees. You should have the patience to figure things out, get through it, put things together, 
And then maybe you've earned the right to put bees in your hive. I don't know. But uh, it's a little frustrating, but I finally did get it together there. And they're all glued up. Good to go. Now to get it to hold in a 90 degree position. How would you do that? Using only the stuff that they provided, remember? So what did I do? I took the base and I put that up on top of it and I verified that it was at 90 degrees. How could I do that? Well, I could take one of the clamps because they have 90 degree corners on them. Look at that. This is my 90 degree uh, check right there. It's good to go. So I'll leave that on there and let that glue dry. And then we have the frames to put together. Now it takes 15 frames, but they gave 17 frames in the kit. So that's good news too. So you glue all of those up. And uh, that's fun to do. Of course, don't make a mess. Don't have to tell you that. And use all your clamps and then you might have some left over and let those dry. But now it starts to look really cool. When you put that in there, this is like looking into the hull and the ribs of an old ship or something. Because the visual rhythm of this is really interesting. And of course we have to put beeswax foundation in it, but I thought I would look at this first and uh, just make sure everything was fitting up right. And they do maintain bee space. I think it's just cool. This is almost a piece of art. I really liked putting that together. We have these interesting openings through the top, which are, are, of course, are for the bees to have as passageways later once the hive is in full swing. And uh, I let these dry overnight. There's no reason to be in a rush. This is a fantastic winter project, by the way, although it's July the 25th right now. Um, it is uh, a great thing to do when the weather's bad. So now let's put the clear panels in the 180 degree viewing windows, which are one of the things that make this really unique. So of course, don't forget to pull these uh, protective coatings off. Some of them are clear, so you might forget that that's on there. There's a thick panel and a thin one. So we put the thick one in first and it should snap right into place. There's nothing you do to hold that in there, except the configuration of those flanges and then the radius of the end pieces there. And it did. It fit just right. Look at that. Snapped in. Now let's put the thinner panel in. But that's what you're going to be viewing your bees through. And uh, the concern is, of course, that your bees could build burr comb and uh, brace wax right up against that interior surface. So here's this thinner insert. And I did look at the company. I tried to find out if I could get an extra thin insert like this but I could not find that. Remember today, July the 25th, this Indiegogo campaign is going live. So you can look down in the video description and find out what these things are going to cost. And you can support the campaign for having these hives here in the United States. So this is the beeswax that came with it and they're basically square. So we know that the frames are 12 and 3 eighths of an inch in diameter and uh, this beeswax will go in the middle, but I want you to pay attention to the way the beeswax is oriented here. This is the pointy side down. Look in their illustrations and the plans here, pointy side down. If you turn it 90 degrees to the right or to the left, you're going to be putting your beeswax foundation sheet in incorrectly, so I want you to pay attention to that. Now, room temperature and with the warmth of uh, just your hand, you could stick that on there. But I decided to use a heat gun just to warm it up a little bit more and I want to make sure it makes really good contact with these frames. And of course there's no wood finish required on these frames. Leave everything on the interior just plain. The bees are going to take care of that themselves. And remember any rough surfaces inside a hive the bees will propolize. So even that bar along the top here I make sure and press that up really good too because I don't want this stuff to sag before the bees have a chance to work it because I'm going to put all 15 frames in at one time. And there again, I want you to look at this would be the incorrect way and that's the correct way. Pay attention to pointy end down on those cells which are hexagonal. Now, I'm going to finish it with Helmsman's by Minwax. Why? Because the Blue Nose Schooner 2 was in Lake Erie, and that's what they used on all their woodwork, so I thought, good enough for beehives. 
and this is clear gloss it's good for all weather conditions which helps me out here now placement of your hive I put this on the porch of my way to be Academy building which is where I learn about honeybees and where I teach about honeybees I think it's very important to put this hive in a sheltered location in other words you want a roof over it when it comes to high noon you definitely don't want to be opening up this beehive uh, and letting the sun pour in there and potentially turning your hive into a wax melter so having it in the shade I think is a great idea and I finished the entire exterior how many coats did I put on there four four thin coats of helmsman's and uh, because I want to make sure that I do that just once the only thing I did not put an exterior finish on of course all the interior surfaces but I also did not put a finish on the entrance reducers on the back I put the solid reducer on and on the front I put the smallest entrance reducer this is the environment that we're in here it is with the clear panel on and it looks great now this is morning Sun it's about 65 degrees out here and I want to stress it again don't put this in the open where the midday Sun can heat up your hive so afternoon this would all be in the shade and that's a great time to sit out here and visit with your bees and I'll bet you're wondering when are you gonna put bees in it how did you get your bees in it now this may, looks like a covered wagon to me a little bit and of course it has the ivory bee logo on the side and everything and uh, there is room on both sides of it to look at the hive and just sitting in the company of bees is a lot of fun but now I'm looking at the railing of my deck here and I thought at first it'd be okay to have the bees flying in and out but I'm gonna fix that in a minute right on cue I collected a swarm out of a nearby tree and all I did was spray a little sugar syrup one-to-one -one sugar syrup on some of these frames I dumped some of the bees on the top of the hive and I'm hoping that they're thirsty enough for sugar syrup that they'll wander into the frames and then I'll be able to put the top on I also have this little yellow bucket here which is part of my everything bee vac which I'm testing out this year and it turned out to work perfectly to install bees in this ivory bee hive and the bees go in of course what's in here to entice them nothing really just the sugar syrup so I'm counting on the bees approving of the space and of course the fact that they are thirsty enough that they want to go wherever that syrup is and once I get the top on I'm just going to leave the bucket in front of the hive with the rest of the bees in it and we're going to hope that the queen walks in and if she walks in they'll all walk in so here we are nothing to entice them other than the fact that that's real beeswax for the foundation and that it's a space that I'm hoping that they like and as I mentioned before, they copied very closely the space of the horizontal clay cylinders that were being used roughly 5,000 years ago um, in the Jordan Valley. So here are the covers on. The bees finally did scoot to the middle. And we're not going to leave this open for very long. Um, but I want to close it up and hope that the bees will walk into it. And uh, we'll find that out soon enough. So we get the cover on and now I leave the bucket of bees right next to them. They'll smell the pheromone of the bees at the entrance and if they like it, they'll come in. If they don't like it, the bees that are in the hive will simply walk out and rejoin the bees that are in the bucket. So I decided to tip the cards in my favor and put a little more sugar syrup on the landing board, get them to go up there had a bunch of them going they started to go in and investigate and the way bees measure a space that they want to move into they walk it off they get in there and they trace all the interior surfaces and then if you're lucky you'll get some bees on the landing board that start to fan and spread their nasen off gland and then they'll encourage the other bees to follow them and that's exactly what happened lo and behold the following day listen to how quiet it is they're all there I didn't like the railings there so I made an open entrance for the railing now so we have a lot of hives here these are lands hives those are insulated they do a lot of venting and they have a lot of activity we have 34 colonies of bees in this bee yard this is a long Langstroth hive and this of course the ivory bee great addition 
and then of course observation hives in my way to be academy building so we have observation hives in here so that we can learn about the bees but let me tell you one of the best parts of having observation hives of any design is that you simply get to sit and be quiet and listen to the bees and see what they're doing and that has tremendous benefits this, of course, is the frame on its stand. And these are there were two extras, so I'll be able to swap out frames later. Here is uh, the currently occupied hive. This is the far end opposite the entrance. And the entrance side, look, they've already taken propolis and sealed up those vents. So they don't want venting. I expect as they fill this hive up that uh, they will also seal the holes at the other end. Now, they're doing a lot of interesting things in here. First of all, I had to add auxiliary lighting so that we could see that. And uh, it's on the covered porch, by the way. I want to emphasize that again. But you'll notice that they built out their comb on one side of the frames. And look how thick the comb is. Of course, here is at the end where they're building out the other comb. So they've done about seven of the frames so far. And this is after one month of occupation by that swarm. But if you'll notice, the comb is double thick. In other words, they built it out on one side of the frames, but the cells are open on both sides. I found that to be very interesting because with the Langstroth hives, we put foundation in there, but of course the foundation is set with bee space on both sides, as these were. But uh, they decided to build their comb to one side, but the cells are open on both sides through the center. I've never seen that before. But one of the greatest benefits of having an observation hive like this one is that you get to simply sit and be quiet and listen to the bees and see what they're doing. And there are proven health benefits to being in the company of bees. And I think that one of the greatest appeals of this design is that you can put it on a porch, you can put it inside your bee shed, Maybe if you modify the entrance, you could have this even in your home, but it is insulated. So you can just be in the company of bees. And what a great conversation piece. So this isn't going to be, in my opinion, a high production hive. Uh, if you notice, they're just halfway through, but we have a big nectar flow coming. So I'm going to update this as the year progresses. And I think we're going to see that they're going to fill it all the way out. We have a queen in production. But this is very different from a standard observation hive in that we're not looking at the face frames themselves. So you really won't be looking at eggs being laid. You won't be looking at brood being reared. You will be able to see the bee activity. And what I find interesting too is that they are connecting brace comb and burr comb on the interior surface of that glass, which is pretty predictable. But we're going to have an opportunity now to see how they manage the space. Look at that. So it connects right to the interior surface. I'm not anxious to pull this off and pull individual frames. I think it will be fun just to see how the bees use it. And of course, we can introduce people to bees by pulling the top off without disturbing them. That's the other thing. The hole covers off. It's 180 degrees exposed, and it's exposed throughout their length. And look how calm the bees are. There is an entrance at one end. They are not bothered. We did not get the attention of guard bees and I don't wear bee protection when I'm sitting down and staring at this hive. It is a great way to show someone bees inside the hive from another angle without disturbing them as often as you like. So I think it's a very interesting hive. I hope that you found this presentation interesting and stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already because I'm going to show you through the year what this hive looks like and eventually, yes, I'm going to have to open it and disturb the bees. But good luck with Ivory Bee with her fundraising campaign. Look in the video description and thanks for watching. Happy beekeeping.